Hello, I'm Cara Campbell, an agricultural consultant from SAC Consulting, and today I will be talking to you about red clover. Red clover is a forage legume that fixes nitrogen. Therefore, it does not require nitrogen fertilizers during the growth and establishment stages. Both potassium and phosphate are required at 70 kilograms per hectare or 56 units per acre. A soil analysis should be carried out to determine the correct requirements of phosphate and potassium. A broad range of soil types, except acidic, wet or shallow soils, are ideal for red clover. The soil pH needs to be between 6 and 6.5, although it can tolerate levels down to 5.5. For a monoculture of red clover, a seed rate of 12 to 15 kilos per hectare would be appropriate. Red clover can also be sown in a mixture with a companion grass, which can have many advantages, including higher total forage yield and the utilisation of the fixed nitrogen by the grass. Red clover is suitable as a break crop to improve soil structure and soil fertility. It is relatively drought tolerant due to its long, deep taproot. For germination, soil temperatures need to be above seven degrees, which is also required for regrowth following winter dormancy. Red clover can remain as a productive lay for two to three years, with harvesting occurring three to four weeks after grass. The ideal growth phase for cutting red clover is the early flowering stage with six to eight weeks between cuts. Wilting is important as red clover can be sappy, but be careful to not over wilt as the nutrient value will decrease as the leaves can become brittle and shatter during harvest. The ideal wilt time is 24 to 48 hours. However, this will depend on the weather conditions when you cut your silage. As with grass silage, elimination of oxygen from the crop is critical for the success of the silage. Red clover is unique as it has an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, which inhibits the protein degradation, which is basically the breakdown of protein into amino acids. The enzyme protects the protein, particularly during the ensiling process, which improves the amount of rumen undegradable protein available in the small intestine of the cow or the sheep. The inclusion of red clover in the diet of livestock may reduce the cost of protein supplementation. Red clover can be fed as silage or grazed by livestock. Grazing should occur after the final silage cut in the autumn. This is to reduce the risk of bloat. The risk of bloat is highest in cold, wet weather and when the animals are particularly hungry. Red clover should be introduced gradually and once introduced should be become a consistent component of the diet. Red clover silage can be fed in conjunction with grass silage or whole crop silages. The dry matter of red clover silage is typically between 20 and 37 percent whilst crude, crude protein content is higher than grass silage at 17 to 21 percent. Whilst ME is typically about 11 megajoules per kilogram of dry matter. It has been shown that the inclusion of red clover silage can increase dry matter intakes, milk yields and polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3 and omega-6. In beef animals, daily live weight gains have increased with the inclusion of red clover silage in the diet. For more information on red clover and what it can do for your farm, please visit faz.scot.